Guys, at what point do we say enough is enough? At, like, at, at what point do we draw the line and say, we do not want to see any more MMA or boxing crossovers? Because as, you know, all we, as we all know, guys, I'm a huge friend, uh, fan of Kamaru Usman. And he was in an interview and he said that he wants to fight Canelo Alvarez in November. He wants to fight Canelo Alvarez in November. And, you know, the first thing that hit me was, I mean, this is going to be a murder, guys. Which it is. If you think Kamaru Usman stands any chance against Canelo Alvarez, please click, please click off this video. Because this is just getting to the point where it's absolutely ridiculous. And now, mind you, a couple days ago, Usman's um, manager came out and said this. Kamaru, <laughs> Kamaru will knock out... Uh, Canelo Alvarez in three rounds, Ali Abdelaziz, Kamaru Usman's manager, says that within three rounds. So Kamaru Usman is going to fight Canelo and knock him out within three rounds. Now, here's the thing. Kamaru is, Kamaru is an amazing fighter, pound for pound, the best UFC fighter currently that we have right now. And honestly, up there in terms of, you know, GOAT debate, you know, if he's able to do his division again a second lap, which he's currently on pace to do. And a lot of people point towards his striking. They say, hey, Kamar Usman is a great striker. And guys, I don't knock that. I'm not saying that he's a bad striker. Anything of the sort, guys. We've seen him knock out Jorge Masvidal. We've seen him knock Gilbert Burns out with a, well, not out, but TKO. Knock him down with this a jab. We've seen him drop Kobe in his third, in their second rematch, guys. We know Kamar Usman is a great striker. But there are levels to boxing, guys. There are levels to boxing. Because... Uh, I don't even know if I, mean, if I should really critique Kamaru Usman's, you know, uh, boxing ability. Because, guys, he when he gets into fist fights, I mean, guys, go back to that first Kobe fight. Usman, and even in the rematch as well, Usman has the uh, uh, he has this this terrible habit of when he's striking with opponents, guys, he kind of you know dips his head low and he swings wildly. And you know that kind of works well, I guess, in UFC because no one, I guess, is you know able to really counter him that well. I mean. Kobe did a little bit in the in the in the first fight as well. Kobe got some good shots off, but guys, that type of style and that bad habit where Usman has where he swings wildly and ducks his head down when he just starts getting hit, it's gonna land in a vicious knockout by Canelo Alvarez. I mean, guys, there are levels to this. Canelo is would literally you know knock Kamara out in the first round if he wanted to, and even Canelo was like, "Hey guys, the only reason why he's calling me out is a payday. He wants a payday, and damn right he wants a payday because there's literally virtually no way I see Usman going out knocking or even hurting Canelo Alvarez." And you know, some things you'll also hear on the internet they'll say, "Hey bro, uh, don't forget that you know uh, Canelo, uh, not Canelo. Uh, Conor McGregor went into a, a, a round and a really good fight against Floyd Mayweather, and he did pretty good. And it's like, dude, are you kidding me? The only reason why I forgot what round that match ended, right? Um, but the only reason why McGregor had moderate success in his boxing match with Floyd Mayweather is because Floyd took those early rounds off. Floyd even admitted to, admitted to the media that, hey guys, like I didn't even train for this fight, like. Literally, he trained for the, like, the last two weeks before the fight, guys. It wasn't even a full fight camp. Floyd was pacing himself, letting Conor McGregor, you know, kind of gas himself out and get a salt, uh, sense of, you know, superiority before he kind of upped up the pace and the pressure and cracked him and, you know, made it a TKO, guys. Conor McGregor, I give him credit for, again, crossing over into boxing. I mean, sure, he didn't get knocked out in the first couple rounds, but to say that he went out there and surprised a damn near almost beat Floyd Mayweather, you're kidding yourself, guys. He didn't. And this is my bigger issue with everything, guys, because you have people who think, they look at what Conor McGregor did, and they say, hey, it's possible for, for UFC fighters to come over and knock out and beat boxers. And I'm not saying that's impossible, guys. We just saw Anderson Silva go and win and be uh, a, a pretty good professional boxer, guys. And some UFC fighters have found success in boxing. I'm not saying it's, it's impossible. I'm just saying that, guys, there are levels to this. There are levels to this. And what blows my mind is that we're going to this trend where people just don't realize the discrepancy in boxing skill because we have Francis Ngannou who wants to fight Tyson Fury in a boxing match. And I just don't get it, guys, because Francis Ngannou, 
crazy knockout power, right? You can draw comparisons to Deontay, to Deontay Wilder in that regard. But guys, there are levels to this. We do not want to see Tyson Fury and Francis Ngannou get into a boxing match. But I can guarantee you guys it's going to end the same way that the last fight ended with Tyson Fury being victorious. This Francis Ngannou has that one punch knockout potential that Deontay Wilder has. Yes, but Deontay Wilder couldn't put Tyson Fury away. Like, what's different? I mean, I'm sure Ngannou hits harder. Can he hit him flush and knock him out? I mean, sure, guys. I mean, it's possible, but... Are we really going to pay pay-per-view, guys? Are we really going to put hype into this? Are we really going to see the world tour, the press tour? I mean, if I do watch these fights, if I do watch Canelo and Usman fight, guys, it's for entertainment. If I do watch Tyson Fury and Francis Ngannou go and fight, it's for entertainment, guys. These UFC fighters are not going to be able to go in there um, and outclass these world-class boxers. I mean, Ngannou has a better chance than, than Usman in beating you know, his boxing counterpart, you know, because Nagano has a one-punch knockout. I get he has a chance against Tyson Fury, however slim it may be. But, and that's a whole different conversation as well. But, dude, Usman has no chance against Canelo. And it's clear as day that this is literally like a payday. Uh, this is getting to the point of, you know, this being a little, like ludicrous, guys. This is becoming a little bit of a joke. I mean, like, it, it's, it's literally becoming a joke. I mean, this is coming down the path of Jake Paul wanting to go in there and, like, fight Khabib or McGregor in UFC and stuff like that, guys. It's getting to a point where it's just ludicrous, guys. Respect the individual sports and just stop with these crossovers that just don't make any sense. I'm getting sick and tired of it. It's it, it's just a joke. Usman stands no chance. Love Usman, guys. Love Israel Adesanya. You know I'm Team Nigeria all the time, guys, when it comes to UFC. I love my, my African champions. But, guys, there are levels to this. Do not put this fight together, guys. Will I watch it? Possibly getting, yes. But for entertainment purposes, guys, I'm not going in thinking that Usman is actually going to win. It's going to be uh, a drawn-out fight because Canelo is not going to let him, you know, he's not going to knock him in the first round, but guys, come on. It's not really any competition. So with that, guys, a little bit of a small rant. <laughs> I'm tired of this, guys, but thanks for watching. And again, let me know your opinions down below. Um, are you excited for this fight? Do you want to see more crossover between boxing and MMA? Just let me know, guys. Always a dialogue. So thanks for watching. And subscribe here for more videos like this in the future.